Hi everybody, it's Dove here. I just wanted to show you how to clean up after making a salve of any kind, whether it's a skin salve or lip balm. And the reason I'm doing this is because it's actually a little bit more complicated than you would think. Because when I first started out making salves and lotions and everything, I had this notion that I could just take my uh, measuring cup and my utensils and everything and put them in hot soapy water and that would just dissolve all that stuff away and make it go away and that was wrong <laughs> so I had to learn a different way of cleaning up after myself so I wanted to show you I kind of I, I got started but then when I realized what was happening here because I made actually quite a mess when I was pouring these and so I stopped because I wanted to show you exactly what was happening and so I just covered this with a paper towel just to you know keep them protected and everything and so what was happening is when I was sitting there pouring them I was over pouring and so sometimes the the balm you can see there I over poured on that one and so some of it spilled and so it's like literally sticking and if you turn it over, you can see there is skin salve right there on the bottom of that. And it's all on the table and everything. So I wanted to show you what I do for the cleanup. It's actually a whole different process. And I didn't want to make the, the skin salve video any longer than it was because it was getting really long. And so I just wanted to show you real quick what I have to do to clean all this up. And this is going to happen before it goes in the hot soapy water. Before I put my dishes in a sink full of hot soapy water, this is what I have to do to clean up. And so, I mean, it's really easy to clean up now. And you have to do it now before it gets too bad. And so I'll just take a clean paper towel and wipe off the sides and the bottom because I know it it ran down the sides and so you have to clean off the sides and you have to clean the bottom and when I take these containers apart I try to keep the the lids mated to the bottoms it, it, that's hard to explain so I'm not gonna even try to explain it and sometimes there's nothing wrong with it. So this one was a perfect pour. And so I don't have to do anything with that one. But you just want to make sure that every one of them is clean. And if you're really good, you don't have to worry about it. There's nothing on the bottom, nothing on the sides. All you have to do is put the lid on it. And so there is actually a drop of salve right there but that was like an in-between drop when I went from one tin to the next one because there's nothing on the sides or the bottom of this one and so I'll just go through and do that and these are all cooled off like in the in the other video part two of how I make my skin salves I explained that you really need to make sure that these are all cool before you put the lids on because if you don't you will get condensation forming in your lid and you don't want that and this one has some I can see the salve sitting there on the table yep so it's sitting here in a pool like a little tiny thing and it's on the bottom I'm not sure if you can see that or not but just wipe that off and if your paper towel gets gunky get another paper towel like this is not the time to be cheap or skimpy paper towel you want to make sure that this is all clean and dry but most of these were okay that one's not I already know that one's not because this was the first one that I filled so there is actually a nice big pile of salve right there and that's why I stopped measuring on a uh, weighing it on the scale because every time I had to move these I was literally like sloshing the salve out of the tin and that's a no-no because that's wasted 
And so I've got quite a bit sitting here right now. These were okay. So this made 18 and a half tins. So that was cool. That's my half one. I showed it in the other one. And there's a little bit of yuck on the side. So this is my own personal salve that I will keep on my desk over there. That was the last one I made. And then on this stuff, you may think that just putting this down into hot soapy water would get that clean, but it's not going to work. That is going to stay there no matter what. So I've got all these old paper towels, like that's the one I got the sediment out with, and that's another old one. I always keep these and I use them until they're literally dead and I can't fill them up with anything anymore. And so you just take your old paper towels or new ones, like I'm probably going to have to reach for new ones, but that's okay because you cannot just set this down in hot soapy water and expect it to just dissolve. It's not going to happen. So you have to take a paper towel and wipe this stuff out. And that's just your preliminary cleaning. So that's done. And then I've got another one here. And it's all on my table and everything. So I'm going to have to clean all that up. But basically you're just cleaning it until it's clean. And then what you'll do after that, because there will just still be a little bit of a film, an oily film. But that's so much easier to get clean when you set it down into some hot soapy water and you let it soak for a little bit. Like, that's almost clean. I don't know if you can tell or not. But there is, there is a film, a, a light film. But that's really easily cleanable. And then you do your utensils too. There's just a little bit on there. But it's not going to come off if you just set it down in water. It's just, it's not hot enough. You can't get it hot enough. And so you really have to do this preliminary cleaning. You can kind of see the, hopefully you can see that salve on there. And actually I wouldn't even want to waste it, but I, I don't have any dry areas that are exposed right now. But normally, like if I did, I would, <laughs> I don't like to waste anything. So if my knuckles were dry, which, you know, I guess it's not going to hurt anything. I do this when I'm making lotion. Whatever's left in the containers, I just kind of just start slathering on my dry parts, like my elbows and my knuckles and, and all that. But then whatever's left over, I just wipe that off. And it comes right off. It's so easy to do it now. And if you try to do it the other way, you're going to you're gonna regret it. So just learn from my mistakes because I've, I've been there and I've done that. And then sometimes these uh, essential oils, the droppers for them, like the reducers, sometimes they don't come with a reducer. Like if you get this bigger bottle like I did, it didn't even come with a reducer. Like these smaller bottles come with a reducer and so you can just do one drop at a time. But this one didn't even come with one. And so I had to take my own dropper to dispense the essential oils out of here. And because I have enough droppers, I can dedicate, like, you don't want to mix them. And I'm so lazy, I don't want to clean them every time. So, like, this essential oil has its own dropper. And then I've got several others that they have their own droppers. And so what I do is I just take these little plastic Ziploc bags and I don't clean it out. I make sure it's dry, but I don't like put that in hot soapy water and clean it out because I'm using the same essential oil every time. And so I can cheat like this. This is definitely cheating. <laughs> and I squeeze out the air. And so that is only used for this specific essential oil. I will never use this dropper for anything else except for this essential oil. And so as long as you have it, your bags labeled and everything, you can do that. And I got these online. They're, um, if I can find the link to them, I will. I got this size and then another smaller size and I use, I use them for a lot of different things. All right. 
and then this one has got some salve down in the bottom. So again, I'm just going to take this old paper towel and I'm going to wipe out as much as I can because that's going to make the final cleanup much, much easier. I know this seems kind of like self-explanatory, but it's not. I mean, I really did. I went through the trial and error and I learned the hard way that if you don't wipe this stuff out, you're just going to be at the sink forever. And then I wipe out my measuring spoons. Everything. Everything. It's much easier just to take some paper towel or whatever, even if you have, like, no, I don't even recommend that. Because if you were to use, like, a regular towel and wipe it out and then put that in your washer, that would be kind of hard on it. So as expensive and as rare as this is, the paper towel with the coronavirus crap, you still want to go ahead and sacrifice these guys. And I just use them over and over until I can't use them anymore. And so over here, you probably can't see it. I can probably bring the camera over, but there are little little pools and splotches of the, the salve where I missed or dripped. And so all these little paper towels I've been using for the containers, I'm just going to keep folding it over and get as much off as I can. That one's really done. I'm going to throw that one away. <clears throat> but I'm just going to go fold it over and over onto itself until this is all gone. And then I will come back through and I will spray this down with alcohol and let that sit and kind of loosen everything up and then I'll take another paper towel, probably a fresh one, and clean that up. I, I think that's it. Paper towels are your friend. Make sure you use them to do your preliminary cleaning. And then after that, you can get the excess oils and everything out of your containers and off of your countertops and your tabletops. Okay? All right, guys. Talk to you later. Bye.